ask about, you know, let's get the Genesis story here. How did you get involved with this? How did this all begin for you? And, and tell me about the beginnings of Psycho, the film. I had been, uh, I had one movie and one television show, and uh, I decided to go with MCA, which was then the biggest agency in the business, and I said, I have a list of directors who I want to work with. And they gave me a list of 10 names, and uh, which was kind of street kid of me, I guess, to think that I could get away with this. Uh, but uh, one of the names on it was Alfred Hitchcock. And I met about three of the other directors, and uh, nothing came of it. I wasn't interested in what they had. And then they said, that we're, we're going to send you a book that Alfred Hitchcock has bought. He'd like you to read it and then come in and meet him. And uh, I found out later that, of course, that was the last thing in the world he wanted to do. He had absolutely no desire to meet any new young writer. And uh, yeah, he, he loved to work with uh, people he knew and kind of uh, from his own generation. And I was just this street kid from South Philadelphia who uh, couldn't possibly be the one who would do it. He ran my first picture and he didn't like it. <laughs> and uh, they told me all this. <laughs> my, my agents told me and they said, don't worry, we don't stop. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I bet no one here hears that from their agents today. <laughs> but, uh, they spread the word that they wanted me to do this, and they uh, uh, contacted the New York agents, and one of them, uh, who was a special friend of Hitchcock's, wrote recommending me. And finally he caved, and we set up a, a meeting, and uh, then I got kind of scared, because I didn't really know how in the world you were going to film this book. It's all about a man and his mother. And uh, it, for the first 11 pages of the book, they're talking to each other. And uh, I thought that was fine when I started the book. But then when I got to the end and found out that the mother was dead, I began to wonder how, how are you going to film this? You know, how many times can she be on the toilet and he's outside the door talking to her <laughs> and we hear her voice? And so uh, I, I kind of, on my way there, on my way to the meeting, driving down Melrose to Paramount, I uh, came up with the notion of making the movie about this girl who is in two pages in the book. She, she comes in and uh, gets killed. And uh, I thought, I'd like to make this a movie about the victim for a change. And so this is the way I pitched it to Hitchcock in talking with him. I just, uh, I just said, this isn't a movie about Norman Bates. It's a movie about Marion Crane. Now let me, let me break in here. This is one of the things that I think makes this movie stand out. Everybody's commented on the fact that you, you see Marion Crane getting started in this film. You figure she's the main character. And by the end of the first act, she's stone dead. And, uh, you, you have a situation that's very similar to, to what you're seeing now. Things like Pulp Fiction where they, they tinker with, with the forward motion of time or even Memento where it goes backwards. But, these, uh, the, these ideas of tinkering with what the, the audience's expectations of the story aren't all that new, I guess. Well, when I, uh, when I uh, pitched the whole first three and a half hour uh, to Hitch as I saw it with her stealing the mummy and, and stuff like that, um, I, I, and, and it took a while. It took almost as long as it takes on the screen because I kept embellishing things. And, uh, then I finally said to him, and then 
and she's she feels she's going to do the right thing. She's going to go back and turn in money. And she takes a shower, and it's, it's you know it's washing her sins away, and everything's so wonderful. And then the person comes in and kills her. <laughs> and uh, he looked at me for a moment, and then he, he leaned forward and he said, "We could get a star." <laughs> <laughs> He was right there with, with the whole thing, picturing the whole thing. I think he probably had it all uh, choreographed in his mind while I was telling it to him. And uh, we, uh, when we left, uh, he asked my agent to, to come back in the room. And I went outside for a cigarette. And uh, he... Uh, and then my agent came out and he said, you got it. And he wants you to start tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And I said, impossible. <laughs> I can't. My session is at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, what session? And I said, well, I'm in analysis. <laughs> and I, I, I go see my doctor every morning at 9 o'clock. So would you tell him that I can be here by 10.15? <laughs> and my agent looked at me like I had just lost my mind. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, postpone it. You know, don't, don't have any analysis. <laughs> and I said, that might never get finished. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, he went back in and came out rather quickly and, and said, OK. You come to work at, at uh, 10 15. And in meanwhile, he had to tell Hitch why I was going to <laughs> not be able to follow his rules. And uh, I had always had the feeling that right off the bat, he was interested in hearing about my sessions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he had ever in his life met anyone who owned up being in analysis. <laughs> but of course, his generation, it would have been a crime. <laughs> um, for me, analysis was almost virtually my, my religion. And I was very proud to be in analysis. It was expensive for one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just, uh, I just would tell him sometimes, and he began to know whether I had a bad session or a good one. Uh, I found out right away that uh, that he loved to chat and he loved gossip. So I would make gossip up. <laughs> and uh, like I told him a terrible story about Eva Marie Saint. And when I was finished, I said, I think it was Eva Marie Saint. <laughs> so he, he loved being put on. And we had a beautiful relationship. Just a light and give a star. I like that story very yes. much. I am told, and I don't know if this is true, and I'd like to check this out with you, that part of the thinking behind the way they made uh, Psycho, Black and White, with his television crew from his television series, was that he had seen the success that that uh, William Castle had had. In, uh, well, and, it, it was uh, American International. Yes. And uh, when, when I met with him, he said, uh, have you ever heard of American International? And I said, yes. Corman Phillips. Yes. And he, uh, he said, do you know that they're making movies for practically pennies? And it brings in millions. And he said, what would it be like if we did one? And I love that he said we, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, suppose the, the great Hitchcock did one of these real low budget movies. And we're talking about right after North by Northwest and Rear Window and all these big expensive marshmallows that he had done. 